Fifteen miles from Jerusalem rests a sun-scourged plain, bordered by rocky mountains and perilous cliffs. In 1947, a Bedouin boy, while searching for a strayed goat, cast a stone among the cliffs into a cave. To his surprise, he heard the sound of shattering pottery. On this program, Zola Levitt examines the remarkable find taken from that cave, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Shalom, hello again. Uh, we're taping in my home today, and there's a special reason for that. This is a very special day. This is November 8th, 1991, the day of the second written revelation of Jesus Christ. Crazy statement. Let me, let me define myself. This morning's paper came out, the Dallas Morning News that I read and the New York Times, which I also take, with the story of the Dead Sea Scrolls mentioning the death of a messianic leader in the first century. And uh, this, this material that has been suppressed for more than 40 years is, is suddenly revealed. And it is a written text about the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ outside of the New Testament. There's never been another one. As I say, it's the first written revelation of Christ since uh, John finished the book, of Pat, uh, the book of Revelation on Patmos in 96 AD. That's a pretty long stretch, some uh, 19th century. So that was pretty exciting. And as I read the articles and thought it over, I, oh, I made some phone calls and I thought, well, this, this is very important. I talked to some friends and finally called the crew it together and, and uh, called the printer and delayed our, uh, we were just sending out a Levitt letter extra all about the peace conference, uh, uh, the Madrid peace conference and so on, a wrap up of that. But really this is so very much more important. Uh, there's nothing more important than this. I have in my lifetime not seen a, a more significant biblical revelation than this. So we stopped everything. I'm adding a, a, a couple of pages to the LLX and uh, I'm making this program today and going to try to get it to most of you uh, this week and, and hopefully even uh, some of you tomorrow and the next day. We're going to uh, uplink these, uh, the, this program on satellite as fast as we can. Now to begin with and to orient you to the topic, uh, I'm going to go back to footage from a program we made in 1983 at the Dead Sea Scrolls Museum. And uh, there we looked at the original Dead Sea Scrolls. They're behind glass, kept there. And uh, we're going to actually meet the curator of the museum, Magan Broshi, and he is going to read to us, word for word, from Isaiah 53, the prophecy that is very much brought out in the new material uh, that's revealed from the Dead Sea Scrolls. So we'll look at that um, uh, former footage, and then I'll be back with you uh, after this. Where you can see uh, behind me in the distance is the Knesset, uh, where the Israeli uh, parliament meets. And then in the foreground, uh, the white dome, which looks like the, the top of a jar, and that's what it's meant to look like. The Dead Sea Scrolls are in there. And when they were discovered in caves by the Dead Seas, they were in clay pots, in, in jars, with lids that look just like that. And, uh, you know, they were discovered in uh, 1947 to begin with, and then for several years after that, they found more and more. A whole book of Isaiah, uh, uh, some of Habakkuk and Daniel, and, and a great many scrolls of the sectarian writings of the sect known as the Essenes. Uh, John the Baptist was associated with them. Uh, they were the religious zealots of their time, and, and I don't know if there's ever been any like them. Uh, they thought the temple was defiled, uh, Jerusalem was unclean, uh, they didn't want to participate in worship there. Uh, they gave their lives to uh, self-denial, self-mortification before God, confession, uh, baptism for the remission of sins, uh, uh, very, very strict doctrines. And some people say uh, Jesus owed some of his teachings to them. I don't think so. Uh, the Lord was quite different. He participated in the world. He was accused of, of being with the publicans and sinners. And, and he said, it's the sick that need a physician. It's those people he came to save. He was hardly an Essene. But in any case, the writings that they did, the meticulous care they took with them, helped prove that the Bibles that we use today are quite accurate. The book of Isaiah in there, for example, supports the Isaiah translation you might buy in an American drugstore today. A very fascinating thing. Now, we've arranged an interview with a brilliant uh, curator of this museum uh, to give us some more information. 
So here we are at uh, Isaiah 53, if you'd be kind enough to read. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Right. Now, how close is my, you speak English and Hebrew perfectly. How close is this English uh, translation that I buy in the United States to this Dead Sea Scroll found in the, in the caves at Qumran? To begin with, it's the same text that we have in the Hebrew Bibles to this very day. Yes. In this particular case, there is a matter of uh, spelling, but not really the content, the same words, the same letters. Now, no real difference. No it's really. exactly the Bible that you have at home. How do you account for the idea that if I take a King James Bible that's only 400 years old, and uh, say a living Bible is a modern American, in only four centuries, I really have a lot of changes. The language is quite different. Whereas we're taking, we're skipping from two, 300 years before the Christian era, all the way over to, to what we're translating, and uh, there's almost not a letter difference. Did the scholars Well, have... this difference that you have, if you have the King James or the revised version or the Jewish Publication Society version, there are many versions, this always happens with the translation. I mean, no translation is 100% satisfactory, okay. especially when we now, at the end of the 20th century, know much more about the ancient Hebrew language than the scholars a century ago or four centuries ago uh, used to know. Yeah. But the point that the Bible has been preserved unchanged is due to the fact that uh, the people, the copies, regarded it as a holy book that one wrong letter spoils the whole work. We use handwritten Pentateuchs. We are not allowed to use in the synagogues for reading the law, the five books of Moses, a printed book. So we have scribes this very day, they do the work, and if you see them, how they do it, before they start the work, they go and have a ritual bath. Huh. It's not an hygienic business. I mean, they have a ritual bath to prepare themselves spiritually for the job. You know, the chapter, Isaiah 53, begins with the verse, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And I understand that verse better today than I ever did before. The arm of the Lord is revealed to believers, and uh, to believe the report about it takes a little bit of Bible knowledge. Uh, probably the most important revelation of at least this century uh, was concealed purposely by liberal scholars with no understanding of biblical truth. And I'm going to cover that uh, thoroughly. I'm going to do something I rarely do on a program. I'm going to uh, read from the daily newspaper. Uh, the article appeared in, in the uh, Dallas Morning News. Dead Sea Scrolls mentioned death of Messianic leader. And the New York Times reference to execution of Messianic leader is found in scrolls. I'm going to read uh, from the Dallas paper because it's more complete. And the New York Times, curiously, omitted all reference to Scripture. The Morning News listed out all the Scripture. I find that interesting. In any case, the article went this way. Um, the dateline is Associated Press from Los Angeles. Newly released text from the Dead Sea Scrolls mentions the execution of a Messianic leader, suggesting that some ancient Jews shared the Christian concept of the slaying of a Messiah, scholars said Thursday. Um, 
you know, they don't believe, this, these are people who do not believe the Lord's report. In, in the, the gospel is full of Jewish people believing in Messiah, but discounting the New Testament, and that's okay with me. The, the power of this, this, uh, this new revelation is it's, it's not biblical. There's an extra source now to read of Christ outside the New Testament. Technically, you could say, I don't believe the New Testament, but I do believe in the uh, historicity and mission of Jesus Christ. You could do that now. Listen up. One fragment contains five lines of text that describes a, quote, leader of the community, unquote, being, quote, put to death and mentions piercings or wounds, said Robert Eisenman, a professor of Middle East religions at California State University at Long Beach. The text also uses Messiah-related terms, such as the staff, the branch of David, and the root of Jesse, said Mr. Eisenman, who helped translate the scroll fragments. Its language is close to that in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, which says, for our sins he was wounded, and that is Isaiah uh, 53, 5. Many Christians use Isaiah's prophecies to aid to their understanding of Jesus, and that, that is significant. We've taught Isaiah 53 uh, uh, meticulously on our program repeatedly uh, because it is so Christological. Mr. Eisenman said he doesn't know whether the leader mentioned in the text was Jesus, but he said the text has far-reaching significance because it showed that the scrolls writers and early Christians shared similar messianic ideas. The idea of it, is it Jesus? Well, it is someone at the time of Jesus who came uh, for his people, uh, was uh, suffered and died and was wounded for their transgressions. So it sure sounds like Jesus, let me put it that way. But it, it doesn't literally say Jesus in the scroll. He said the text supports his controversial theory that the most recent scrolls were written by Jews who helped form early Christianity. Many other scholars believe that the scrolls were written by an ascetic Jewish sect called Essenes. The sect called Essenes lived down by the uh, Dead Sea, and of course we uh, uh, have, have covered their uh, activities before. They, they were the people from whom John the Baptist came, really. He was closely related to them, and uh, uh, we detailed it in our footage. Uh, we've known for a long time there are connections between ideas contained in the scrolls and Christianity, says the scholar. However, this particular idea, the idea of a dying Messiah, is new and explosive, said Michael Wise, a University of Chicago professor of Aramaic, the language of Jesus. You know, it's, of course, it's not new and explosive to anyone that reads the Bible, but the point here is these men are not believers. They don't believe the New Testament revelation, but they have found in a completely separate source, a scientific source, a carbon dated source, that there was a dying Messiah at the time of Jesus. Now, that's a piece of news. Uh, the Dallas Morning News put this on page one, by the way, the New York Times on page four, uh, the Dallas Times Herald page five. It'd be interesting. I learned from friends out of town their paper didn't cover it at all. You can figure out where your newspaper is spiritually, I suppose, by the page number of this revelation. Mr. Wise, who helped translate the fragments, said it was always thought at the time that uh, Jews at the time of Jesus expected a Messiah who would restore Israel to dominance politically. Yet the newly released text shows that the Jewish scroll writers had the idea of a Messiah who would suffer and die. That's what explains Jesus. There have been Messiahs through, through well, we have Messiahs today. We have Reverend Moon. We have Lord Maitreya. We have Maharaj Ji. We have all sorts of Messiahs. But the idea of the suffering, dying Messiah is what Isaiah and the other prophets forecast. And that is what Jesus did. He says, that shows this was not an idea unique to Christianity. This, well, of course not. Again, Bible readers can read Psalm 22 and, and uh, Daniel 9:27 and so on and see that uh, Messiah is to be cut off and so on, Daniel 9, 24 to 27. But uh, people not reading the Bible have now found this out. The scrolls contain the oldest known copies of the Old Testament and numerous other writings. Scholars believe that they were written by a Jewish sect sometime between 200 B.C. and 50 A.D. That would put it two centuries before Christ and a few years after him. The 800 scrolls, most in fragments, were found in caves. We showed that on our, our former uh, program. A group of scholars working under Jordanian and later Israeli auspices 
controlled access to many scrolls for 40 years, drawing criticism that they were sluggish in publishing translations. And of course, this is, they, they, they still are sluggish. It's just that people made a, they, they made a concordance and people from the concordance reconstructed painfully the original text so the rest of us peons could at last see what, was, what they were suppressing here in these scrolls. And it's worth seeing. My, is it ever. Uh, if the translation of the fragments is correct, the text is, a ve is very significant, says James Tabor, a University of North Carolina associate professor of Christian origins and ancient Judaism. It tightens the connection tremendously between the early Christians and the people who wrote the scrolls. Eugene Ulrich, a University of Notre Dame theology professor, said, it's an interesting text. I doubt if one would call it explosive or revolutionary. This particular character is the one who uh, was the chief editor. Uh, it says, as chief editor of the scrolls, Mr. Ulrich was among the scholars who had early access to them. Uh, he and his staff suppressed this information all these years. I, I don't think a, a man like this, a University of Notre Dame theology professor, would, would even appreciate that he's reading scripture and, and, or, or has other reasons, but why he would suppress so important a revelation for so long a time is beyond me. Many concepts once believed to be uniquely Christian were found to have been mentioned by Jews who wrote the scrolls, Mr. Ulrich said. <laughs> what a revelation that is. Uh, Jews wrote the New Testament as well, Mr. Ulrich. Uh, Jesus was a Jew, Mr. Ulrich. Uh, he lived in Israel, Mr. Ulrich. Mr. Eisenman and Mr. Tabor said scroll editors could have published the text years ago and now want to play down its significance because it could damage traditional religious views. Mr. Ulrich denied that the text was withheld. The traditional religious views, I'll translate that for you, the view of unbelievers. <laughs> it, would, it would promote Christ in a world of unbelievers, and so they really didn't want it out there, I suppose. But let me deal with uh, some of the things the text says. Um, well, to, to quote anybody familiar with the Bible will find it refreshing that exact quotes, Isaiah the prophet is three words in a row, which of course corroborates his existence. The staff shall go forth from the root of Jesse, Isaiah 11.1, 1. the branch of David, and they shall be judged, again 11.1. 1. And they put to death the leader of the community, the branch of David. That's an exact quote. Quote, with wounds or stripes or piercings, and the high priest shall order. That's an exact quote. Those quotes don't appear in the Times, but they do in the uh, uh, Dallas Morning News. Um, the idea of finding exact scripture in scrolls that old and, and such key messianic scripture makes this uh, a special day. From this day forth, I can, I can actually find corroborated uh, Jesus and his mission in an independent source. And the carbon dating is important. The idea that, that from 200 B.C. to 50 A.D., that particular period, the Isaiah book must be authentic, and it has been authenticated because it was written down well before Christ. In other words, the prophecy can't have been forced into Isaiah. We have it in writing, dated it as being before Christ. So it really was prophecy. Now then, the reference to uh, Messiah's mission, his suffering, his dying, the stripes, the wounds, comes uh, no later than 50 A.D. So you can put to rest the liberal theory that the Gospels were concocted by churchmen in the 2nd century, 3rd century, or whatever, uh, that uh, 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 likes to, uh, a way to defame uh, Scripture and its authenticity. Now we know that the, the Essenes who lived at the time of Christ wrote these things down. Probably they were concurrent with the news from Jerusalem of what happened to him. But they cannot have been later than 50 A.D. So forget about the, the later Gospels. That, that makes no sense. This agrees nicely with Scripture. Um, the Dallas, uh, sorry, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls text is, uh, is full of what the Associated Press calls Messiah-related terms and the New York Times calls ideas of Christian theology. But this is really scripture. That's the point. Uh, it's, it's not the philosophy of the Essenes who wrote it. It's quotations from the Bible of messianic prophecies. And their subject is the community leader who was executed in Jerusalem and how he dovetailed into the prophecies they themselves had read and copied uh, from Isaiah. Now, it, it says another thing. Uh, the Jewish Christians, people like me, who are born and bred Jews and believe in Jesus Christ. Now, we have a tough road to hoe with the rabbinical Jews, the, the regular, ordinary, however you call it, mainline Judaism, the Judaism of the synagogues and so on. 
Uh, that's supposed to be the authentic Judaism, and we are the offshoot or the new clan or, or the, the Johnny-come-latelys and so on. Well, what this scroll shows is that these Essenes were believers in the Messiah. The Jewish Christians go all the way back to the beginning. Messianic Judaism, or the idea of Jewish Christians, Hebrew Christians, Jewish people that believe in Jesus, does go back to the first century. Rabbinical Judaism doesn't go back to the first century. Uh, the, uh, the concept of a suffering, dying Messiah is nowhere known in rabbinical Judaism, never spoken of. They prefer Isaiah 9, 6, and 7, unto us a child is born, a son is given. But uh, the concept of him coming to die, if they, if they believed that and agreed with that, they would be sort of stuck with Jesus because that's what he did. Well, these Jews of the first century corroborate for us that that is what he did. They saw it happen. They wrote it down. They're not scripture writers. That's the power of it. You don't have to go to what's called the Christian Bible. You don't have to go to the New Testament, a book written and published in Israel by Jews. You don't have to go to that book. You don't have to be a believer. You look at what they wrote. It's history. It's carbon dated. It's timed. And they saw. They believed. And they were Jews. So um, this is valid in Judaism, the suffering and dying Messiah. Jews believed it. Jews believe it now. They always have. Paul points out in uh, Romans 9 through 11 that, that there's always been a Jewish remnant, and there always will be. And uh, uh, the remnant in that day saw Jesus. The remnant in this day believes in him. And no apologies to the other sort of Judaism that goes along uh, uh, willy-nilly without the Messiah. Now another point made by, by the new revelation, the suppression of the Dead Sea Scrolls information. It shows the, the liberal scholars' fear of the Bible. The, the, oh, to, to know something like this. How does one get to sleep when he knows a biblical truth and he is purposely keeping it from his fellow man? And a biblical truth is important as this one. How is it possible to know in your own heart, to have a scroll on your desk that corroborates the mission of Jesus Christ and to keep it suppressed for more than a generation? Uh, to me, it's, uh, I mean, people are criticizing, and, and uh, the defenses go, well, we didn't want it in hands that didn't appreciate it, et cetera. The best I can say is uh, the scholars are well-intentioned, and they felt uh, 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 professional jealousies, and they wanted to do the job very exactly, very specifically. That's the best I can say, uh, and that's hard to believe. If I, if I had a revelation... One percent as important as that, I would be standing on the roof of my house screaming it out to my neighbors. Uh, finally, and this is a very interesting uh, concept because we are pushing against the membrane that separates us from the tribulation period. This might really be the end because, you see, faith is now becoming, not as it's defined in Hebrews 11, 1, a belief in things not seen. But evidence is showing up of Christ. This is, this is seen evidence. I can read this and I can believe. Like I said earlier, I could technically be an unbeliever and say this man, Jesus Christ, indeed, uh, was real, uh, historical. He came evidently to die uh, for his people. Uh, that's uh, uh, what happened. And uh, while I may not hold to what he said or I may not want to believe it, uh, it happened just as he said it did, because I have manuscripts from the day. There's no question that they were written then, and they cover that. I don't have to read the New Testament. Well, Daniel 12.4 said that knowledge will be increased in the end times. One of the characteristics, and that's not knowledge of science and technology he refers to, but especially uh, knowledge of, of spiritual nature, revelation biblical knowledge. And this is the first written revelation of Christ since, since, since Patmos. This is incredible. Knowledge has increased enormously with this, just terrifically. Well, I couldn't have said to you with such authority before that uh, a suffering, dying Messiah was valid in Judaism without some written document. I, I mean, I've said it, but rabbis have said, well, Zola, that's what you believe. You know, you know, we love you. You're a great guy. you got a wonderful shtick, but... Uh, you know, it's your own belief, that's all. It's something you feel in your heart. Okay, you mean what you say from the bottom of your heart? Don't bring it to the synagogue. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll bring it to the synagogue in a Dead Sea Scroll. I'll say, did our people write this? Our people said this. What, what, what about this? Uh, I would have then a written document. That's knowledge increased and increased tremendously. Well, what more can I say? Let me, let me try to review. The newspaper comes this morning, and I learn that my people 
oh, in the order of, two, well, starting some 2,200 years ago, wrote down a book of Isaiah in full, accurately. Now, I knew that much because I was in the Dead Sea Scroll Museum, as you saw, and I heard the curator read to me from Isaiah 53. More than that, though, it is now revealed by a man who had it hidden in a dresser drawer or whatever. No, he didn't reveal it. Sorry. He tries to keep it suppressed, but others have put together from a concordance that the scholars made, have gone backwards from a concordance and reconstructed what must have been the original, and now it's out, even though they still have it locked in a trunk. Now it's out that my people also wrote a messianic leader was killed, wounded, stripes, pierced, for his people, uh, and all the rest that's revealed in there that's exactly Christological, that's just about Jesus Christ. That's the gospel written down in a completely separate source. I don't know how to tell you the importance of this discovery. It will be on page 16 of your paper, or whatever it will be. It won't be very important news. My goodness, the news today is Bush and Baker and how they're making peace on earth. Uh, that also is pushing against that membrane of the tribulation period. It's also peacetime, if you know what I mean. Daniel 8.25 says the Antichrist will destroy many by peace. And uh, that's what we're getting. But uh, false peace is what I'm saying. But uh, uh, this is the news of the day, folks. <laughs> this Dead Sea Scroll, and there's plenty more to come, I'm sure. Now let, let's examine some more of them and see what these people have suppressed. You want to get the truth? Go to where the liars are and see what they won't show you. And I guess we'll get the truth. Thanks for, for watching this program. I read that a few hours ago, made this real fast, and we're going to send that out as fast as humanly possible. That new LLX, you can order it. We'll throw it in with any new subscription, and that's our offer on this program. The Levitt Letter Extra is a publication from our office that we ask for a subscription for because we mail it by first-class mail. The subscribers to the LLX will get the thoughts that I dictated this morning tomorrow morning. That fast, well, assuming the mailman is fast enough, but if not, then the next day. But uh, immediately, not like our, our, our newsletter is always free and you can write in for it. That's not a problem. We'll send it to you right away. It's called the Levitt Letter. But this is the Levitt Letter Extra, and we ask a subscription price to pay for the 29-cent stamp and the fast publishing and, and the fast handling and so on. But I think you'll like it. And when a discovery like this comes up, that's what we need. Fast, quick, before they, they shut the lid of the trunk again. Uh, and, and also uh, information we get from Israel and about the peace conference. So we have friends in, in uh, some places that report us the news so that we can give you the news and you don't have to get it off of, uh, off of the ridiculous networks that are purporting to cover it. Um, this offer is for six month subscription. It's $49. We'll send it to you for six months, and this should be a crucial six months. And if you'll take this for six months, we'll throw in free the Levitt Letter Extra Notebook, which is a compilation of the whole first year and a half or so of the Levitt Letter Extra. In other words, back to the beginning. You can read it all up to this point, and then you'll get all the new ones, including what I'm talking to about today. You can call with a credit card, $49, please, and Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem.